Podcast. Hi, and welcome to Deep Leadership. I'm your host, John Rennie. Well, I hope all is well with you today. It is Saturday morning, and I'm drinking a hot cup of Bottom Gun Coffee from my friends at BottomGunCoffee.com. I have another great show lined up for you. But before we get started, I just wanted to mention my latest leadership book. It's called You Have the Watch, and it's available on my website and on Amazon. In fact, it's already a number one new release and a bestseller on Amazon. I'm excited about this book because it's not actually a book. It's a guided journal for leaders that will take you through an entire year of leadership training. There are 50 themes in the book, and each day you will reflect on a different facet of that theme. This journal is designed to be on your desk at work for for you to read and reflect on for about 15 minutes each morning. And leadership skills are like any other skills. You need to practice them to get better at them. And this journal helps you practice those skills. So if you're interested in this guided journal, go to youhavethewatch.com or Amazon to pick up your copy today. Also, keep an eye out on my social media feed for upcoming book signing events in your area. So if you're looking to support what I do on the show, purchase any one of my books at johnsrenny.com and podcast listeners can use the discount code DEEP at checkout to get additional savings. Well, that is it. Today, my guest is Evan Sohn. Evan is the chairman and chief executive officer of Recruiter.com and an expert on the shifts that are happening in the job market. I wanted to get him on the show to talk about what leaders need to be doing right now to attract and retain the best employees post-COVID. This was a fascinating discussion that every leader needs to hear. We're living in a time that is not business as usual. So if you want to build the best team, you need to make changes to how you find and attract top talent. Evan helps us understand all the things that we need to do. So are you ready to dive in? Let's get started. Welcome to Deep Leadership. Leadership is a people business. That's the philosophy of your podcast host, John Rennie. As a former Cold War submarine officer who spent 20 plus years leading businesses in corporate America before starting his own manufacturing business, he knows that leadership matters. Leadership matters. Are you ready for some real world actionable advice from John as well as his expert guests? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. The show starts right now. Welcome to the Deep Leadership Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Evan Sohn. Evan is the chairman and chief executive officer of Recruiter.com, an on-demand recruiting platform that combines AI and video job matching technology with the world's largest network of small and independent recruiters. He is a frequent contributor to CNBC and Yahoo Finance and is the perfect person to talk to about all the changes that are happening in the job market right now. I'm excited to have him on the show to learn from his unique experience. Evan, welcome to the show. Uh, John, thanks so much uh, for having me on. I uh, really, really appreciate it. And the fellow beard wearer. So, you know, that's got to be a good thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, hey, before we dive into uh, a lot of the questions, tell us a little bit about Recruiter.com. What is it that you do and what makes your company so unique? Uh, thanks. So Recruiter.com is really at the uh, epicenter, as you mentioned, of all the things going on in the job market. Uh, we're an on-demand platform of software and services combined together to help companies of all sizes uh, address the challenges of recruiting talent. So finding talent, we'll, we'll double click on this, you know, throughout the uh, the next half hour, is something happening across every company from large and small. Uh, and we're there with not only uh, fantastic software, we have great AI SaaS software that companies subscribe to uh, with over 170 million profiles uh, to engage candidates in a in a proactive fashion. Uh, we also run career communities for active candidates looking for new opportunities in different segments. And then we run the largest network of on-demand recruiters. So think of us like Uber for, uh, for talent acquisition. So companies come to us large and small and say, hey, look, I need a recruiter uh, for the next six months. I wanna pay them by the hour. I don't wanna pay them. And we could talk again about the changing in the, the world of work and why the old model of paying a headhunter 30% just doesn't work anymore. Um, and that's really what we do. And uh, we've been doing it for a couple of years now. I, I've been CEO since June of 2020. I've uh, been involved with the company since uh, April of 2019. And it's uh, been been an exciting opportunity. I'm not a talent acquisition guy. You know, um, my background really is, um, I've been involved in a number of startups uh, really at the operational side. So helping companies grow, corporate strategy, product strategy, sales, uh, 
if you wake me up in the middle of the night and you say, what are you? I'm a sales guy. So th- that's my background. Great. So, I mean, you know, you've been with the company since uh, 2020. Now you've seen kind of a strange uh, job market uh, period that we're in right now. They call it the great resignation. And uh, what are you seeing? Why are so many people leaving companies yeah. despite this, you know, a high unemployment rate? But it seems like a lot of people are kind of making an, an exodus or thinking twice about their career plans. What are you seeing right now? Yeah, so uh, it's a very loaded question. So uh, <laughs> let, let, let's break it down for a moment. Um, I actually became CEO in June of 2020. So really at the height of the pandemic, right. I sat down with the board and I said, guys, when this is all over, the uh, the job market's going to be in absolute disarray and we're going to be there to help companies uh, uh, get things back up and running. So the first question really is, uh, why the great resignation? So A, we, I really call it, or we really call it the greater resignation. Um, so, you know, you'll see, oh, 4.3 million people quit. Uh, yeah, okay, and that sounds terrible. But in 2019, the average was 3.5 million people quitting every month. Mm-hmm. So there, there are 160 million employed individuals or 150 million, depending how you look at it, in the U.S. And, you know, there is an annual attrition. Right, people come and leave companies all the time. The attrition rate, and on average, was something like twenty-two percent in twenty nineteen. So there always were people quitting uh, every month, uh, new jobs, retiring, switching careers, etc. And in different industries, there were different levels of attrition. Financial services probably had something like fifteen percent, but you know, McDonald's uh, has a far, far greater attrition rate. Um, so what you start to see happen really was a greater resignation. All of a sudden, people woke up and said, oh, I don't want this job anymore. And there's a variety of reasons. Uh, let's go through them. Uh, my company, I, I moved to Florida. My company is in New York. They want me back in. I'm not going back in. Um, I like being home. I like working from home. I don't want to even go into an office. Mm. Um, you know what? I am taking an early retirement. I'm not going back to work. Um, I actually think there's an underlining number of people who had two jobs and during the pandemic gave up uh, one of them and started doing gig work. There were more EIN numbers uh, distributed, that's employee identification numbers, more sm- started in 21 than in any other year. So more people started businesses. I don't think they were starting you know, hardware stores, right? They were starting. Right. So if you had someone who was working at two factories, one was working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The other one, the other, the other half of the week, he worked Thursday, Friday, Saturday at a different factory. COVID comes, he's home, he's getting unemployment, uh, starts driving for DoorDash or Uber. And what do you know, when pandemic's over, it goes back to work at factory one, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Instead, he works Thursday, Friday, driving for DoorDash. So I think there's a lot of these things going on there now. What we're going to see happen, and, and I'm going to be on CNBC um, I'm on once a month, usually right before the jobs report comes out. And I believe we're going to be talking about, you know, we predicted the great resignation to be over by around the summer and we're seeing it happen. We're actually seeing the, the marks that it's slowing up. Really? Okay. But it's going to be replaced with the job hopper economy. Okay. So let's actually go through that, right? So you sort of have this episodic thing of people waiting to quit. And by the way, the other thing, John, was people were waiting to quit. Right. Oh, you know, I, I'm getting on my benefits. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to wait and then I'm going to quit. We started to see this mass number of people. And that's what we started to track really this past October. Mass numbers of people that really, really started last August, just quitting in droves far more than ever before. 900,000 more, 800,000 more, 700,000 more, big, big, big numbers. But what you're seeing happen now is being replaced by what we call the job hopper economy. So I'll give it, let's break it down for a moment. If And this started really in Silicon Valley, and I spent a bunch of years there with a company. If you saw a software engineer in Silicon Valley who had, and who had been at four different companies in, in uh, sorry, four different companies in 12 years, you would actually say, that's a hot software engineer. That mm. must be an incredibly talented engineer. Three companies in 12 years, four companies, done, that person must really know what they're doing. In fact, You'd also say the opposite. A person that was at the same company for 12 years, a software engineer, you'd say, what's wrong? Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, unless they're at Google or Airbnb, you know, something like that, there must be some problem. 
So if I said to you, all right, you see three years ago, you saw a resume of a 30 year old who had been at the same company for a decade. So they're 30 years old, they graduated college and they had the same job for 10 years, not Goldman Sachs, McKinsey, Morgan Stanley, Google. You would probably describe them as loyal, committed, steadfast, climbing the ladder. Well, in 22, right now it's now May 22, you saw a 30 year old with the same, same, same company for 10 years, not Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley or McKinsey. How would you describe that person now? Yeah, I mean, especially in a in a software type type scenario, yeah, it would be you'd be kind of questioning why, you know. Stale. Yeah. Is he someone that's uh, exactly yeah. right? So what's really changed is that our opportunities now are far greater than ever before. Hmm. And what's happened is if you think about all the assets of applying for a job, you know, when you and I were kids, and I'm I, I'm a couple of years ahead of you. Right. You know, you went out, you got the heavy stock paper for your resume. Right. You typed up, you typed up your cover letter. Yeah. And you mailed, you mailed it in. Now, if you apply to 30, if you if I told you I applied to 30 companies, you would say, Wow, I can't believe you applied to 30 companies. Because the process of applying for 30 companies was humongous. And I would probably say the expression, finding a job is a full-time job. Oh, you got an interview at 30 companies. Oh, I, I, got, I applied to 30 companies. I got 10 interviews. This is exhausting. It's exhausting. Well, let's now go to May of 22. Applying for a job today is click, 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 click. It cannot be easier to apply for a job. In fact, if you found someone that only applied to 30 jobs coming out of college, you're like, is there a problem? <laughs> you know, yeah. My son, two years ago, was applying for internships, must have had 90 companies that he applied to. And he was being selective. Oh, this is this segment of 30, this segment of 30. It was amazing. What's what's interviewing today? Is interviewing the way it was when we were younger? Get a suit, travel, take an afternoon off? No, no, it's online. Everybody's doing it online, yeah. It's a a 15-minute video screen. Yeah, yeah. So it's become easy to apply at a job, easy to interview, Now, let me ask you a question. How many jobs, John, did you not look at because they're geographically undesirable? Oh, yeah. So so that's a big issue for me. Yeah, because, yeah, exactly. So let's throw that out. Now, you're going to say, well, the company wants hybrid. That's fine. But the point is, if a company wants to work with John, they're going to say, look, John, I need you working at the company. I don't care where you live. Come in every other week. Come in every three weeks. Come in once a quarter. I, I don't really care because I need your skill set at the company. So easy to apply, easy to interview, and you could work from anywhere. So the only thing that was holding you back was the stigma of leaving jobs too quickly, right? Because we all grew up with with a parent that said, suck it up. I know one job. job. Yeah, one job your whole life. Yeah, get the gold watch, retire. Yeah, get the watch and retire, right? But if you remove that stigma, if the stigma of leaving companies is gone, which it is. Article, which yeah, is which now it is. Gone. I, yeah. There was actually an article a week ago, two weeks ago, where they surveyed millennials and they said, I would rather quit my job than be at a bad job. Mm-hmm. Now you're like, holy cow, that's unbelievable. Where's the suck it up? Where? But the reality is that it's so easy to get a job now that who cares if you quit? You can quit a job on a Friday. I'll get a new one by Monday. Yeah, yeah. So if you remove that now, you, now you have this new economy that we're in. And the new economy that we're in, we're going to see faster turnover. We're going to see more people leaving jobs faster than ever before. Yeah, you're, you're right in that, in that the stigma is completely removed. And that's actually, it's a change maybe even from just five years ago, maybe. You're, uh, definitely from 10 years ago, but... Definitely from five. Not, yeah, not but... It is it is bizarre because I've been a hiring manager for 30 years, right? So, uh, and I've actually switched where that doesn't bother me anymore when I'm looking at a resume, right? So I'm like, okay, this is just the way it is. So, but what, but it leads to the question. Um, so what, I mean, if we're employers, right? And we're trying to run a company, we want the best and the brightest working for our companies. And there's no stigma attached with That's leaving. Right. So what, I mean, it just, it's the question I'm is excited. like, what do, what do companies need to do to, to attract and, and uh, retain high talented individuals? Yeah. If, if so, so first, leave. 
Yeah. So first, we're going to make this recon- We're going to recognize the fact. Yeah. That every company of size, and let's assume size has twenty people in it. Mm-hmm. Every company of twenty people is going to have to spend more money on talent acquisition and retention than ever before. Mm. And if the expression finding a job was a full-time job, we're going to replace it with finding people as a full-time job. Yeah, yeah. And so you have to, as an employer, business leader, owner, manager, you have to be saying to yourself, am I allocating enough money to talent acquisition or retention? Mm. So that's first and foremost. I'll give you the example of security. You and I grew up where security at a company was the guard at the gate that checked your ID. (laughs) Right, right. right. That was the only security that we had. We didn't know from anything else. That was security. And now security, every company now is spending money on security. You might not know it, right? It It might be behind the scenes, but your email, your firewall, you're spending money on security. And I will predict that every company is now going to be spending money on talent acquisition and retention because you just can't do it on your own anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, you know, you mentioned a lot of people are 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 switching jobs for for the challenge for maybe to go to a hybrid model. What are some of the reasons why people are saying, hey, I I don't want to work at this company more. I'm going to I'm going to switch. Is it is it money? Is it bad management at the other company? What are some of the reasons so the, why people are leaving. We actually track that every month. Um, uh, management is like number three. Mm. So number one is, comp, you know, I'm leaving a job for compensation or okay. for uh, work-life balance. Actually, I'm leaving a job. First is compensation. I think second was management. Okay. And I'm taking a job for a tie between compensation and work-life balance. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Right, so, and and the problem now is, um, you know, you'll see people leave a job for 20 grand, for Mm. 10 grand. You're you're just seeing that happen left and right. I'll trade up really quickly. Yeah, so big big step-ups, you're saying, you know. Yeah, yeah, we had a client who, in one, I was with him for drinks in the afternoon, and he said to me, they had a software engineer. This is a real big, big company. Then in one day, that software engineer got a 50% salary increase between going back with another company. Mm-hmm. So you just have, it's just this crazy number. Let, but let's go back to your question before. What can you do? So the first yeah. is recognize that, that you got to allocate budget to this. Mm-hmm. The second that you want to do is you want to get ahead of it. So we sat down and really mapped out the plan for the, 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 our team. So, you know, it used to be that you basically said, oh, thank goodness, I just gave John a 5% increase. I'm good. I won't see, I'll, t- I'll deal with him a year from now. Right, right. Right. The reality is that I have to think about what progression am I giving John? I am actually trying to stall John from leaving. Right. That's really what I'm trying to do. I want I need to stall you from leaving. So what I need to do is to say, hey, John, I'm going to give you a bump up now in January. But guess what? I'm giving you another bump up in in July. I've already mapped that out because we're here's where I need you to be by the end of the year. And I'm going to do retention bonuses to make sure that you stay here through the end of the year. I'm going to show you progression. I'm going to show you why staying with me is a good investment for you. Now, we never did that before. We basically right. said, I shut John up, I gave him a review, I gave him a bonus. All right. Now, the next time I gave you a raise is when you complained to me. Hey, Evan, I'm <laughs> thinking about leaving. I got an offer. Oh, you got an offer that will, it's just too easy now. Mm. It, it's just, it's too easy. Remember, if one of the reasons that, you know, uh, one of our clients had a great line, he said, you know, if you're working remotely, your office doesn't change. Right. Right. Think about think about the last company you worked at where I liked it there. I liked the people. I liked the coffee shop downstairs. My commute was really good. They had these great monthly events. All the things that were good about working at that company are gone now. Mm-hmm. Now, again, I, I'm exaggerating to prove a point. But if you're working remotely, my office doesn't change. My email changes. Mm, yeah. So it's even, yeah. it's even easier. 
Like it's just so much easier. And if I'm only going in once a week, it's just so much easier. So all yeah. we've done is, is reduce the stigma of leaving and we've made it so easy to leave. So yeah. as an employer, I got to create ways to keep you. And the only I'm going to do is to show you more exciting things. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Leadership skills are like any other skills. You need to practice them to get better at them. Best-selling leadership author John S. Rennie knows this. That's why he's written a new book called You Have the Watch. It's a guided journal for leaders designed to take you through an entire year of leadership training. By the end of the year, you will master 50 of the most important leadership skills. If you want to have a greater impact on the results and people in your organization, go to youhavethewatch.com and pick up your copy today. So some other ideas that I that we uh, gave to clients of ours, um, you know, I said to one company, big, a very big tech company, you know, you should actually you should actually tell press, prospective candidates this is a twenty four month assignment. This is a twenty four month assignment. I'm going to pay you a boatload of money, but it's a twenty four month assignment. And when it's over, I'll, I'll give you some a bonus. And you can either take another assignment at the company or leave and we'll all, you know, wave goodbye. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that, and that actually is, is probably an attractive way to, to get people to come in because they're thinking in that, in the beginning, like, okay, this is just a two-year, two-year gig, a two-year That's project. Right. So like the military, right? It was very similar. So we signed up for a certain amount of years. I was in the right. Navy. So you signed, we signed up for five years. And at the end of the five years, close to the end of it, there were all these little bonuses and incentives to stay or or leave. So almost a similar approach to like, okay, you're you're coming on for a two year assignment versus trying to say to somebody, we're hiring you for for a lifetime Forever. because that doesn't happen anymore. It's, it's also very scary. Rare. It's yeah. also, you know, hey hey John, come work for me for life. Yeah, huh? exactly. No, it is scary when you think of the the way we're thinking about that's uh, right companies. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know. Um, it was really fun. You know, you always got to look at, by the way, you mentioned the military. I always look to the military for marketing of candidates, yes. right? And, and you look at the, you know, I grew up with Uncle Sam needs you. Right. 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 So by the way, you can replace that with General Electric needs you, IBM yeah. needs you, yeah. right? Yeah. Be part of my, you know, join my collective. Yeah. Then it was like, be all you can be. So still self-development. Yeah. Right. Uh, then it was, how did I get this great, you know, I got this great career through the military. I learned this through the military. And now it's, hey, do you want to go to Germany? Right. You right. Oh, you know, here are these great experiences you could have in the, you know, in the military. Right. Really interesting. I told another company, a global financial company, I said, you guys have the opportunity you should do a junior year abroad. Yeah, like, yes. You should say, hey, yeah. after you work for me for three years, we have 20 of our clients that we have reciprocal relationships with. You want to go to Dubai. You want to go, like, imagine that. So now you're thinking about the more experience I can give you. Imagine if you worked for me, John, and I, and I know you like to travel. And I said, hey, look, starting next January, I'm going to actually, we're opening up an office in blah, blah, blah. I want you to do that for me. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So now yeah. I'm not saying about, I want, I need, I need you tomorrow to do it. I'm going to do it a year from tomorrow. I'm going to keep you here longer. Cause now you're going to go, gee, I'm going to do this thing. And then I'll have this other experience where I'm going to do the things that I want to do. Yeah. 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 It's really true. And, and I think, um, and I've had other guests on the show talking about how this new, uh, this new workforce, uh, we've got to look for other opportunities to, uh, it's not just necessarily pay, uh, but it's also experiences and skills. What are, what am I That's developing right. in skills right now? And if I'm not developing what I want in my skill stack, I'm going to go someplace else. So we've got to give, uh, give employees opportunities to get different experiences and skills that they might have a desire to. And like, that's one would be travel abroad, work, work, you know, work in France for two years or work in, right. in Germany or something that would be, uh, they would say that, well, that's exciting. I'm going to go do that. And it's outside the box. And it's, and it's about experiences uh, versus just, you know, the, the days when you, you came in as a, 
you know, uh, like like uh, an individual contributor, you become a supervisor and a manager, and then maybe you know uh, a director and a vice president. That 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 doesn't exist anymore, right? I mean, does, does it, those, it is it is it is it's, it's rare, dwindling. you know. Yeah, it's I certainly mean, rare. It's certainly dwindling. But I, I agree with you. You know, find the skills that you want to have, find the skill yeah. that you want to have next, and go in that direction. Yeah. Or hey, if you want to get into crypto, okay go work at a company that's doing crypto. Right. right? In other right. words, you don't have to be a crypto engineer. You know, go get involved in these things. Like find an area, find a career, like be find the industry you're interested in. Mm-hmm. Forget about what you're doing. Just find the industry that you're interested in and get involved in that industry. Yeah, interesting. You, you had, uh, in some of the material I was reviewing before I had you on, it was, you said that... Uh, we, we are tinderizing. I don't say the right word. Is that oh, tind- tinderization. No, tinderization? Tinderization yeah. of the recruiting industry. Industry. Explain what that is. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. So, um, you know, I said that really early on. <laughs> it's it's a little of a. So right now we're in a very very candidate centric. Yeah. Market. So you want to eliminate the barriers of. To, to find talent now. So you, you really not, uh, so I'm uh, sorry about that. So, hey, so the tenderization really is about, you know, you and I grew up again with dating was you filled out even let's assume the match, you know, the dating websites, right? You filled out a thousand points of light and your, you know, your match filled out a thousand points of light and you looked at resumes and paperwork and all this other stuff, right? And Tinder basically said, the hell with all that. Yeah. Tell me where you are. Tell me what you're looking for. Four or five basic criteria. I swipe swipe left, you swipe right. We're done. Yeah. So the interesting thing is if I asked you to, uh, all right, you do a nonprofit, right? And you're hiring a comedian for your nonprofit organization to perform, uh, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes comedy, right? Um, in the old days, you would have said, all right, I got all these videotapes of different people. I'm going to look at their resumes and everyone, you know, you're not doing that, right? You're basically going to say, hey, you know what? Send me all the people that are available Thursday night, May 5th, right? That are available, that are in my price range. They're going to come local that are meet my criteria uh, for my event not raunchy, a little raunchy, whatever you want to do. And then you'll watch 30, you know, five 30 second clips and you'll pick the one you like and you'll look at his paper and go, oh, how do you know he was on the Tonight Show? Because they're all, everyone's paper looks, if you looked at the paperwork of, of 30 comedians, it would look all similar. Yeah, oh, This yeah. guy was the, the young comedian award. This is the very young comedian. Like everyone looks exactly the same. But when you go to resumes, they, everyone looks the same. Yeah. So if you were trying to hire, let's assume you're trying to hire a call center operator, right? A call center operator for your business. All everyone's paper looks exactly the same, and their paper has no bearing on whether you they're probably good for your role or not. And I'm I'm exaggerating, right? But what you're really doing is saying, oh, they have these skills, but I want to hear them on the phone. I want to see. Mm. I want to hear them actually talk. So why are we wasting our time? Why are we spending our time posting a job? But by the way, the recruiting process hasn't changed ever, right? Yeah. You post a job, you collect your resume, you review the resume, you screen the candidate, you interview the candidate, you hire. That's that's the process. 30, 40 years ago, instead of having, you know, ZipRecruiter, there was the New York Times. And right. you mailed your right. resumes in, but you still right. did. All we've done is expedited the exact same process over and over again. Yeah, we don't do that in anything else that we do. Like there's nothing else that we do where we do the exact same process that we've been doing for 30 years. We've never changed that process. And so what I when we talk when I talk about the tenderization of recruiting, it's how do we skip that process? How do we go to, you know what? Here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to hire someone. Here's the rate. I want them to start on Monday. Who meets that qualification? And let me see a 15 second clip of them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, hi, John. My name is De- Debbie. I'm interested in working for your company. Swipe left, swipe right, done. Doesn't that make far more sense 
It, that, it does. And we're used to it now with like Airbnb, right? That's how we'll select a property we're going to stay at. Or like I did Toro the other day. I was I was in Florida and I and the first time I used Toro, which is like using someone else's car. Yeah. But you put your criteria in, you know, how much you want to pay, what kind of car right. you want. Boom, there's five cars that show up. And that, that's right. Can and there's imagine, the reviews are there, you know. Can you imagine <laughs> instead if you read the resume for the car? By the way, if Airbnb didn't have pictures, right? Oh, it, it's got three rooms. Yay. You know, like, what does that mean? Right. You want to see it. Yeah. Show it to me. And by the way, you actually look at the paperwork of the house after you've seen the picture of the house. Right. And we all know that the picture is doctored up and it looks really good and they had a professional, but you know what? So what? Yeah. Hey, this house looks great. Tell me about it. Oh, it's got these. It's got all this here. Here are all the things. And by the way, you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. I only want to see a four bedroom house. I only want to see these things. Show me what I yeah. look. I'm going to look at the picture. Then I'm going to look at the documents and then I'm going to sign up for it. Yeah. Right. When it comes to resumes, people, which is the most important thing that we're doing, that now we're in a war that we're fighting to win talent over. We're trying to keep them. We're doing the exact same process that we've been doing for 30 years. Why do we think that's a better process? Yeah, interesting, interesting. So, so how you know is is your company moving in a direction which would be more of like this Tinder type of thing? Yeah. So we we actually have a whole resume interviewing pro- system, video resumes. We have it. We've we probably have like thirty thousand plus video resumes now. Um, and my guess is we'll start off probably later on in the year, maybe beginning of next year. It's already May, so which means it's already June. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that look, today you, you, you don't want to put any barriers up with a candidate. You know, I, my, our recommendation to every company is like, you got to, you got to, you got to, uh, you got to condense your hiring time. Yeah. Like if you're yeah. taking 45 days to hire somebody, you're losing people left and right. You got to, well, especially if they're only going to be there two years. I mean, you just cut into. Oh my god! You yeah, really a percentage of that work time that they're going to yeah. work there for it, you. You really yeah. got to figure that out much, much faster. Interesting. Yeah, and and like a, like a, the one thing when I you know anytime I'd ever been looking for a job, the, the one one is like you can use the same resume over and over again, but the, the cover letter, right? And, and and the companies need to have a cover letter. Like, what is the purpose of a cover letter, right? Ridiculous. You know, at the end of the day, and, and like. You know, and I think that uh, what you're saying is make it easier for your candidates to uh, to get in in the door, right? So that you can actually see them. Yeah. So look, you know, reality is that if a, an Airbnb house didn't have photos and they say no yeah. photos available, you'd say, all right, I'm going to go find a house that actually has available. Right. And right. if the house looked amazing, but they didn't have any photos, you'd say, okay, can you send me some photos? Right. right? You know, so but I'm totally using that example from now on. It, it, it plays really well. And I think that if you were looking for a hostess or host for your restaurant and you got a, a hundred resumes online and the first 10 actually had a 30 second video and one of those people actually aligned with what you were looking for, you'd probably say, Hey, look, I'm, I'm hiring that person. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think it's going to be something that we start to move in that direction. Well, this has been great. What, you know, if what's one thing that you'd want leaders to take away from what's happening in the world right now? And, uh, you know, this, this, this change in the whole workforce model, what's one thing you want leaders to take away? So, um, so I, I mentioned a few times about the candidate centric market that we're in now, uh, it is going to shift to a company centric. Okay. For a variety of reasons. Um, and so work from anywhere, which is what we're living in today, is going to morph into hire from anywhere. Mm. And hire from anywhere is company centric. And we're seeing we're seeing the beginnings of that phenomena. And that's going to be an a lasting, a lasting trend now. And uh it's gonna even be fueled even more so by the pending recession. Because anytime there's been a recession in the U.S., it's changed the landscape of the work economy. Mm. Uh, 1992 recession started outsourcing call centers. Um, 1998, not a recession. Y2K outsourced IT. Uh, 2005, 2008, we started outsourcing data centers uh, and hosted services. Like their thing, uh, outs- uh, beginning of 2000, outsourced BPO all started. In, in the recession of 2000, you know, all these things have always caused 
changes of the economy that have never returned. And you're seeing now companies can't find the talent they're looking for because companies are stocking up on them and you can't find them. So where are you going? You're going outside the US. Mm. Let me go find English speaking outside the US. Or, hey, you know what? John moved to Argentina and I'm now setting up an office for John because this is where he's gone to work during the pandemic. And as long as they all go hire other people, there's a variety of reasons. But once that changes and the recession kicks in and I need to save money, I'm going to say, you know what? If I could save 30% by hiring a developer outside the US, I'm going to do it. Mm. And I, I think, and and by the way, if John isn't coming into the office anymore anyway, right? Who cares whether you're in the US or whether you're in Albania? Mm. As long as you're willing to work on my time zone and you get your job done, who cares? Right, right. And so today we're terrified that John and you know an employee is going to leave and we're fighting to keep them. And I think that that's going to very, very, very quickly morph into work from a uh, hire from anywhere. Mm. So to the leaders listening to your podcast, watching your podcast, th- this is not this is not a small thing that's going to be happening. Um, there's some very, very big trends that this is going to be taking taking into place. And I would be thinking about thinking about that and in, in, and ensuring that you're prepared to do that. Mm. Yeah. So, and if you're a candidate or if you're an employee, the idea would be making yourself so valuable that people want to go after you, even when it shifts over to being more company centric. That's right. That's right. Look, look, you know, the reality is that everyone in this country is more valuable today than they were two years ago. Mm. How long does it last for? That's a good question. And, you know, if you're starting your prices, you know, the, you know, uh, having run startups before, you know, when you price yourself out of a company because you've asked for so much money, right. you actually put yourself on, you, you put your neck on the line then, right? You do. You know, yeah. You if do. you were going to, if if you, if you came into my office and said, hey, Evan, I'm going to quit unless you pay me an extra 30 grand and I pay an extra 30 grand, you're probably on my hit list. <laughs> the next, the right. next time is a problem. Right. And if you're um, heading into a downturn in the economy, you've got to, you've got to reduce labor costs, then you're looking at, you know. I'm looking at, Who's the guy's costing me the most amount of money? Exactly. So you put yourself at risk. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I I would just be careful there. You know, I would just to the employees, I'd be careful. You know, always get your job done. Always focus on being the best you can be. Build your skill set. You know, become invaluable always. You know, and as long as you're always invaluable to somebody. uh, But again, look, the, the, the great opportunity now is to take risks because it's there for you. What What a great world that these kids are coming into. Think yeah, about it, you know? Absolutely. There's no decision that's permanent anymore. Right. Other than, hell, I can even almost soon edit my tweets on Twitter, right? You know, there's nothing Maybe, permanent. maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Knock wood. That'd be great. Um, so, well, this, hey, Evan, this has been fantastic. I think you gave us a lot of things to think about, including how things are likely to shift and morph over the next uh, year or so. So uh, how can people find out more about you and your company? Sure. Um, if you uh, you want to email me, it's Evan, E-V-A-N at recruiter.com. Uh, if you're interested, we have a great service for small businesses. Go to start.recruiter.com. We have a whole really fantastic offering specific for small businesses or divisions inside of big companies where you get fractional recruiters on our software, you know, no long-term contracts, monthly uh, subscription fees. Uh, You can go to recruiter.com, you know, for for all that information as well. So Evan at recruiter.com, start.recruiter.com or just recruiter.com. Well, fantastic. We'll put links in the show notes for all those resources. Evan, thank you for being on the show and sharing all of your insight. Appreciate that. Thank you so much, John. Looking forward to catching up with you in a couple of months. Sounds good. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share so we can continue to build a world with better bosses. Until next time, this is John Rennie saying take care and lead well. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit our website at www.deepleadershippodcast.com or johnsrenny.com. Until next time, take care. Welcome to the Reverie Channel, where entertainment knows no bounds. 
live concerts, on-demand music, documentaries, and short films, all in stunning HD. Now on Roku TV, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire, immerse yourself from home. And on Android and iOS for those on the move. Support creators with crowdfunding donations. Fuel their creativity. Join us in shaping entertainment's future. The Reverie Channel, where every view, every donation matters. Are you a fan of classic cinema or a young person who wants to discover the best films of all time? Do these legendary movies still hold up? On the Generation Film Podcast, two guys who grew up when movies dominated the culture share a great film with a panel of young movie lovers and see how it plays for today's generation. We discuss changes in storytelling styles, representation, the making of each film, its initial reception, and how its meaning has changed over the years. Join us as we explore cinema classics across generations on Generation Film. Electric acid.